let's talk about load balancers and some more network hosts. And we'll start with the load balancer. A load balancer will manipulate network traffic and or application data so that the data is dispersed to multiple locations. And this is often done to alleviate the amount of load on one particular host. There are several types of load balancers out there, but for this video, we'll briefly discuss the network load balancer and the application load balancer. With a network load balancer, one system is in charge of distributing all network traffic to multiple targets. And it does this by accepting TCP sessions and distributing them as it sees fit. Now, load balancers can be hardware or software, and they can use one of several algorithms to do their work. For example, round robin, which means that client requests are distributed across all servers sequentially. So you'll get one session here, one session here, one session here, and then back to the beginning. One session here, one session here, one session here, and it keeps going in that order. Another way to do this is to do it as least amount of connections. And so let's say that the first server has 40%, the second server has 40% of the connections, and the third server has 20% of the connections. Well, that one can be brought up to speed until it gets to an even level with the others. And you might see this if new servers come online, maybe one was down for a while and it comes back up. So you have several options for how we're distributing the load, but the whole idea is so that one server doesn't get overloaded. Network load balancers are used on premises, but they are also incorporated into cloud providers such as AWS. And the whole idea is to get that network bandwidth transmitted to multiple systems and to make sure that no one user or client session is neglected and we have high availability. On the other side here, we have the application load balancer. In this case, specific packets and sessions are distributed to a certain type of system. For example, we might have web servers and we're just dealing with web traffic, which means HTTP and HTTPS. And so we have a web server here, another here, a third and a fourth. And then we'll have a load balancer, which will distribute that specific type of traffic to those web servers. And so this load balancer could be one of a variety of applications, but you could use something like Nginx to actually distribute the load to each of these systems. Nginx is a web server program, but can also act as a load balancer for HTTPS traffic. Another example of a load balancer program that you might want to look into is called HAProxy which can really do both. It can do TCP load or it can do HTTP load. Changing gears here a little bit, down on the bottom left, we have what's known as a spam gateway. This is another device we haven't covered yet. And a spam gateway is something that deals with email filtering. Let's say you have lots and lots of clients that use email. That is very likely. Well, we want to reduce spam as much as possible. And you could do that in a variety of ways. One way to do your email filtering is to use a spam gateway, otherwise known as a gateway spam filter or email security gateway. And this is generally a software solution that's either incorporated into your email server or it's a standalone device or a standalone virtual appliance. And the reason I bring that up here is we can kind of tie it together. Over here, we have another device, which we will call a bastion host. Though it's not on the A-plus exam objectives currently, this is a term you should know. The bastion host is a single minimized system that is hardened, meaning it can withstand attacks. 
and it usually has a single task. It might be the entry point to a network. It's often placed first on the network or in a cloud subnet, and it might act as a load balancer or perhaps a proxy server or as your spam gateway or email server or as a honeypot, which is used to attract and trap would-be attackers. And finally, on the bottom right here, we have a RADIUS server, which is part of the protocol known as AAA. And it's important to know the AAA protocol for the A plus exams. And AAA stands for authentication, authorization, and accounting. We can break those terms down as follows. First, authentication. Authentication is establishing a person's identity with proof and confirming it via some type of system. Typically, this requires a digital identity of some sort, either a username and password or biometrics or some other authentication scheme, possibly more than one in a multi-factor authentication environment. The second part is authorization. And this is giving a user access to certain data. And the third part is accounting. This means the tracking of data, computer usage, network resources, uh, who has been trying to access specific data, monitoring and logging and so on. For the exam, the most important really is authentication. How is a user or system gaining access to the network and to a domain and how does it gain access to data and so one example as i mentioned of a server that oversees the entire triple a family of protocols is radius and that's what we have here a radius server and by the way that stands for remote authentication dial-in user service the radius server will take control of authentication for clients on the network. And so you might use a radius server in conjunction with your wired or wireless network as clients connect, or it might be used in conjunction with a domain used for authentication purposes. So those are some of the terms that you should know. The load balancer and know that there's different types, for example, the network load balancer and the application load balancer. Also know what a spam gateway is as well as a bastion host, and know your AAA protocols, authentication, authorization, and accounting, and know what a RADIUS server is. And we'll cover a little bit more about RADIUS in another video.